Okay, and uh, in the previous video, so we what we did, we take uh, took a look at ecosystem current ecosystem of closure plugins. Sorry, closure repls, uh, clients and servers. Uh, we did um, analysis on uh, pros and cons for them, and we arrived at the conclusion that we need a new REPL for Sublime, and we're going to use an end REPL as a backend because it it works as you expect. It's a puzzle. For what puzzles me really is why the hell when closure guys like decided to bundle REPL with closure why didn't they copy it like and apple design because it's really good it's it's a little bit maybe a little bit too complicated i'm not sure i feel like like i don't understand everything what's going on here uh, maybe i will get my answers as we go along but um it feels a little bit more complicated especially middle wires <laughs> uh yeah uh, but um, otherwise, it's pretty good. So, and I'm I'm trying like to restrict myself from rewriting everything. So my my first thought, of course, was like, ha, ah, we need to write our own like REPL server, and it will be best and simplest. But um, hmm, maybe maybe we would at some point. Now it's but but this is going to be different battle right okay so let me show you what i have so uh as i said we have an apple and we have an apple here really okay oh yeah well, by the way let's check this like this i, I claim that me, me middlewares are global uh let's do this uh, middleware there is operations that list the middleware from you Okay, and now, so I have some stuff working. Okay, first of all, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove what we installed here. This and Tootkin, so it doesn't get in my way, right? I'll probably restart some line just in case. Um, I don't want them be here. So we have this and so, Okay, uh, let's now search and grapple well, gives me two commands. One is connect, the other one connect to localhost, which is just a shortcut, really. So let's click connect. I have default set to this. I, in, la, in the release, there will be no default, of course. Uh, maybe localhost will be default, um, but yeah, so we press enter. And you see here, we get a message that we are connected which is good, right? Uh, we have console here with something, some stuff is going on. Like I'm actually logging what's going on. So first we clone the session, uh, we got a new ID for session, then we loaded a file. The file is middlewares.clj. So this is a source file where I actually implemented um, a middleware that would put extra information on exceptions, right? Uh, then we just added this and we're done. So this is like what happens on connection. So now would be a great moment to check if middleware is global. And um, it seems they're not, right? Oh no, they are, they are. so this is my middleware. So they are global. Okay, so this is this is weird, but okay. Uh, so I like what I don't understand here is like the purpose of sessions and what like what is the idea of a session if you yeah we'll get there. Don't worry. But anyway, so we have this, okay, and uh, we don't probably need here. So what we can do right now, we go here and we can evaluate this. So I have uh, like once we connect it, we get different commands here. We have disconnect, so we can disconnect. We can eval selection. So the only command I've implemented yet is eval selection, right? And it what it does, it's it evaluates selection. So the result goes in here. Um, uh, this is not final yet, but it looks like that, right? So, so like this is 
sublime built-in way to display um, like annotations to strings. Um, it's it's called annotations, I believe. So it it's right aligned. So I would prefer if it would appear next to he, next to the line, but not in the middle of the line. Um, but so far it's very convenient to use those. There is a way to put something in here, but like I am, I'm, I will see how it goes. So one of the upsides of this is like you see it automatically handles uh, resize for you, right? For example, the other way would be to to actually. Um, We can do it here. So I have, I probably have it um, somewhere in here. Yeah, so there are three ways that I evaluated how to show results. Let me unconnect this so. One is pop ups. No, it doesn't work. What's, what's going on? Um, sorry. Hmm. Um, yeah, because the code is um, not correct. We, we, we are calling this value now. Okay, so yeah, it's a pop up, right? So, which is also cool, I guess, but it kind of gets in your way and it's. Eh, I don't like it. Oh, I didn't show you actually. I didn't show you the um, the errors. Uh, so the, there's an exception with message. Oh my god! What's wrong now? This, this is supposed to work. Huh? Huh? <gasps> Middleware isn't installed. Huh. Middleware stopped working. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> uh, so the problem with middleware is it. Wait, what? Okay, um, I'm going to do this. Okay, so my middleware stopped working, so <laughs> we get this, unfortunately. Um, well, okay, so what we are going to do is it's probably better to write it this way, right? So this will be more like reliable. Otherwise, we just do this. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Not like this. This. Okay, so I messed something up. I'm not sure what yet. What did I mess up? Ah, yeah. Okay. Um. So this way, it's supposed to work. Like this is the old exceptions. This is not what we want to see. But uh, for some reason, middleware stopped working. 
I will figure it out. Maybe it will be our first task, right? But anyways, we were evaluating the way to show results. So this is one way. It's very simple and it's kind of reliable, kind of new. So the third way is actually called phantoms. And we use radio now. And it looks like this. So the problem with phantom is that, um, hmm. let's see, what the fuck? Yeah, uh, the problem with it is like selections works weird. Uh, it can exist actually in, so let's say I will use this and you see three is here, but I cannot really step inside it Right, so when I, I put my cursor here, it is what is actually doing is it's standing right here. So I can, like there's a single space and it stands like left of this space. So it, it looks like it's glued to the space that follows it. Uh, but it is really glued is the, the parent before it. Mm, so there's that problem. And there's problem with highlighting it so as you can see it gets like different uh, I'm not sure if you see this or not it, it gets different line height from rest so I would prefer if it was like this is the same height right um, yeah so selection and this um, otherwise is great you can tweak like paddings in here use HTML but yeah, so I'm go like, <laughs> I'm going with this for now, with uh, annotations. But I have uh, all of them figured out, I think. Let's go with annotations. Okay, so let's make, uh, yeah, and if you print something, it actually prints to console for now, which is also unfortunate, but, um, What you can you do? Right. Okay, let's have a plan of work. Right. Motivation status. Okay, so let's let's fill in status, what we have and what we want to have. Um connect to uh connect command okay uh what we else have is parse b and code we have this working as well connecting REPL, uh parse being code uh disconnect what we don't have is detect socket close so uh, i can spell um so if socket is closed not by us right we we kind of get something from it i think like this so you see it still says connected but we actually get this read loop done whatever um yeah, we can, we, we should show that we are disconnected, right? Uh -huh. Clear annotations. So yeah, this is basically if we related multiple things, uh, we want to a comment that clears them. Let's say we start this with prefix command, right? Uh, this we have, this we have. Okay, the next obvious thing is command evaluate top level form under cursor. Um, evaluate file. So yeah, basically this comes from my experience with light table, uh, what you do is basically you put your cursor here, you 
press command enter. Okay, I don't have any Apple server. Let's start server. If like not, right now what I selected is evaluated, what I haven't selected is not evaluated, right? Oh, we get we get we get exceptions. Yay! So you see now it works. But this is bad. <laughs> Why it didn't work before? I uh, see now we have exception and we have uh, the exception type and message and even exception di data in here. So this is much better i think so i don't have to go to console and check like what's went wrong or something um hmm. what the fuck so huh okay for some reason depends where your cursor is maybe i don't know um okay but um hmm. maybe so what we probably want if i go in here and change something probably clear uh this right so if i change something here with, or here i'd like this to stay uh so keep multiple annotations screen uh, maybe command clear annotation after that um hmm, what else do we want we want um let's let's just see imagine what we're doing one thing i want uh, certainly want redirect std out std r to system out system error. so what i want with this like this is another thing that i haven't seen anywhere but I certainly want it to be implemented, I think. Okay, so let me explain what I mean. So you see, we have a terminal, like which actually runs our closure application, right? So this is actual place where the application started. Uh, so the uh, in on uh, STD out for, for this application is here, right? But, it also serves an REPL socket on this port. So when we connect from Sublime REPL, we connect over the socket, right? So what happens if I do println, right? I just did println, evaluated it. Uh, it is not printed here. Why? Because an REPL, when it evaluates results, it actually intercepts all std out and sends it back to you so if we want if you take a look here um, the sync was hello sublime and we actually see that there is a message that's saying hello sublime right um Um, but you know what what we want is and we also so I want uh, like dot 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 displayed somewhere as the annotation goes on I want this and this is just I don't forget so yeah okay but um, sorry uh, so what happens is output is intercepted and I, I just noticed the session and remembered and um, 
it is sent like over the network like so you can like your client can actually capture it uh which is probably a smart thing to do like gives you more options uh the problem i have with it is i don't like it right i what what what, what my problem is so i like unlike repls which open like separate tab for you like this right so if this would be your REPL, like there's like user blah 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 um if i would have this and std out will go here it will probably okay be okay because i will have like I, you always look at this panel anyways um but i'm i don't want to do that i in fact i think like having a dedicated panel for apple is crazy like and like evaluating here but then seeing you say the same code like appear here and then like your result here and the next prompt like this is very strange experience it's maybe maybe i'm not used to it but i think it's very strange i like to see like evaluation results next to the code i'm in and i don't like a half of the screen be covered with um, this this kind of useless panel right so I prefer not to have this. So the, my preferable way of working with REPL would be like you have your code open, you evaluate inside and you see results in line and that's it. Like you don't check anything else. Like you see everything in here, but like, and it's all fine and great for results, but it's no, it doesn't work for STD out, right? And the problem with STD out is it can came at any random moment right so uh, you don't know when it comes like uh, and it, it could even not be uh, linked to your evaluation and it could be huge and you can have std out and uh, the result value right so which one you should do you show here it's unclear uh, uh, else it could be delayed right so you can for example you can have like a process that executes uh for ten thousand operations but every hundred it prints a dot for example so you think it's not stuck um so how do you handle that for example and so on so for ecd out you probably need something like terminal or separate panel still uh so you, you i i don't know i can i can't figure out a way to put um to put it inside editor a good way right so we stuck with se separate panel okay so what what does it mean all right um it's a separate panel and uh, preferably inside uh sublime so now if we are doing separate panel i could do like for my plugin alone i could implement a separate panel that would do std out stuff right like what is sent to you see the out is printed here so you can periodically check it like i kind of do it right now i like like i have it uh printed to console so i can you can check it console i see if something was printed um the problem with that is you also have your panel with uh like a terminal or whatever with your actual application and some of the cd out will go in here and some will go in your in your panel uh, which is unfortunate like now you have two places to check and i like i used to work with a REPL like this before in light table and it was kind of annoying because like sometimes if you do web development uh there are like sometimes your code prints like your code is executed from a server and server is started when your application starts it is not started from your REPL session so REPL doesn't really seize your std out at all right so your like what server prints will go in this terminal what you what you print during evaluation you will see in this panel so now you have two places to check and you like you sometimes you forget uh to check them both sometimes you like um don't realize which one it will go to so it's it's annoying so solution right you cannot get rid of this so probably we just 
should redirect everything back here right and maybe like uh, use um, i think there's plugin for sublime text plugins uh, package so i think there's plugin for rank terminal and what i think it's called is terminus yes trending yes okay that's it okay let's try this we are going to try to run do i have it installed i have it installed really okay uh terminals what do i do with it huh what do i do with first class platform okay we sh we're supposed to see oh it's disabled okay okay open default shell in a panel no we don't want panel no fuck this okay we have this okay cool so we stop here we run it here for example right and this is it or you can run the panel so it's really up to you but what i don't want to do with my plugin is i don't want to have to create like a third place or second place to check a cd out i want to use normal cd out might be controversial i don't know um <laughs> i'm making this up as i go so this is what we have for the external to system error and the system out uh i think it should it could be done right mm. what i want here middle where for 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 what for error info so as you can as you saw it doesn't always works and this kind of annoys me um this probably can wait uh, this are uh, not very important this uh, probably is important uh, this is important uh, this is important uh, clear annotations probably kind of important this is kind of easy to do i think okay so hmm. so that's the plan i think uh that's the plan so we have a uh, motivation credits license blah 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 we completed uh, just triple i think more the dependencies so yeah this goals <laughs> is failed right um hmm. So we have just three plus and more, and we display code evolution results in the line. That's it. That's that's the difference. Like we are going to display results here, basically. Yeah. Um, so the way, where do we start? Okay, I'll probably get some water, and we can start with any of those. Really. because I've been talking too much, I, my, my throat is sore. And it's been like almost two hours, but I think for me to like, I've been doing lots of explaining today. Uh, I would like to finish small task, some, any task, however small, uh, and that would make me happy. So we don't like end with nothing. So probably this, maybe this, and maybe like we, we figure out what's going on with middleware 
Um, but it's, it's been hard, but, but maybe, yeah. So let's uh, grab some water, maybe some tea. So yeah, I, I think it will be more like five minutes, not one minute, but five minutes break. And then we are back.
Okay, I am back. Um, <laughs> I have my tea, cold tea, I have hot tea, I have something to eat. Okay, let's start with the deck soaking clothes. So, as I said, it's, it probably should be easy. We saw it earlier here at some point. Yeah, see, there is a message red loop done. This is our clue. So apparently, if socket gets closed, a read function just returns. And this is where we supposed to, to initialize disconnect or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah. And the other problem you see is there is like five read loop done. Uh, this is because uh, we are loading the. Um, Hmm. Uh, we're loading the uh, how do you call it the plugin the extension and the old extension doesn't release uh, the connection I have no idea what to do with it really um, maybe actually sublime text documentation yeah here yes um something like uh-huh plugin unloaded if a plugin finds model level function plugin load this is what called from the api is already reused this is what we need actually let's see if there are examples Cool, cool, cool. So I just package function and package. Yeah, this is this is perfect. Okay, so this we will we will put this in plugin loaded and plugin unloaded. We will probably have to do something like this. Def disconnect. We don't really need anything, right? So it's just a function like this. Disconnect. And what we are going to do is this, do this. And we're also going to do the same for connect here we are just going to take this with a lot but whatever we insert it here and we change actually you know what um They wanted this. And we want it like this. Okay, and um yes, sorry. Something like this. Um <laughs> oh, yes. and yeah. This one goes here as well. So inside the command, uh, we take uh, an effort to parse stuff. Okay. Inside it, we don't really care. And I have two comments like um, connect and connect local host. I am thinking that maybe this is unnecessary what we can do instead we can just initial text so initial text right now is host uh, colon port we can just put uh, there um we don't need second command that's my point at least not for now so connect local host no we don't want that let's remove this 
Um, and here we just call connect localhost 5555. We do this and disconnect. Should disconnect check? Probably it should, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see if our something this is not right. Oh yeah, because we're gonna, we're gonna do that, right? Something has no attribute close, none type. Okay, now it works kind of, uh, let's con, sorry. You see, like there is no reason to have separate command if you can provide default value. By the way, this is also remembers last value you inputted. So if something is lost, you just can run connect again. Do I know that Python 3.10 have pattern matching? Um, I think I have read about it, really. But the problem with Sublime, Sublime doesn't ship 3.10. Sublime ships, I think, 3.8 and 3.3, something like that. They, for some reason, they ship two Pythons different, maybe for compatibility, but yeah, you're limited for what it, yeah. What it ships with. This I empty, but it's somehow it works. It's, it's probably somewhere uh, in different place, but. I would love to use pattern matching, actually. Okay, so let's do this. This doesn't work because, because what? The what? Let file descriptor. Uh -huh. Is it from previous or from new one? We are connected, right? Oh, this is what happens when I disconnect actually. Well, okay. Huh. We what? So we're waiting on receive and we close the socket and we get, what do we get? We get some exception, right? What type of exception is that? Is it, is it, is there a type of exception? Huh. I guess this is a type, right? OS error. Ah, yeah, OS error. Okay, uh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, let me close this so I don't accidentally like start something in there. Mm, I imagine that yes, the read loop should be wrapped in something like this is uh, we move this to. Separate function, so this the logic logic in here is more straightforward. What is a way to catch catch exceptions? Except right. Okay, so except this error. Actually, just pass <clears throat> and read stream is. Oh yeah, right. Um, this is another another tricky part that you'll have to redo eventually, but not right now. This is how middlewares are installed. 
I would actually like to batch multiple commands in the and REPL. I wish I could do that. But I suppose I can't. Maybe I can, actually. But anyways, um, we don't need that. We don't need that. Um, the only thing is connect. Okay, read loop done. Okay, now connect. Connected, right? Uh-huh, 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 and we can evaluate, we can. Now, what happens if this stops? Like this exception we don't really care about. Keyboard interrupt is probably correct. And what we want to do is when this happens, we disconnect right would it work what does it requires okay Again, we have, we have, have like we will probably call disconnect twice. Actually, we call disconnect here if it like closes the socket. Huh. Right. Okay. What we are going to do here is we're going to do this. that Straponishka, hi welcome to the stream uh, what we mean to do by that is let me think about it So I don't want to enter this section twice, um, but like there are two different threads. Like in Python, you don't really have two different threads, right? You cannot have them. But in parallel, so maybe it's not a problem. Uh, but I like to think correctly. So what is going on? So this method will cause yeah uh what we are going to do is first we zero the socket so like we don't enter this section in different thread twice right but we still can capture this socket twice uh, whatever Something like that. Okay, let's see. Let's see if you can disconnect. You can connect. Uh huh. Kind of disconnected, I guess. We can have this message here, actually. What kind of annoys me is permanent messages on the left and uh, 
not permanent on the right but this is okay i guess critic 94 subscribed for one month at tier one um poof. this is this is paid thing right you like you pay something for it like or get something from it but anyways thanks for subscribing I don't, I don't understand Twitch very good, but if that is what I think it is. But anyways, thank you for subscribing, no matter what it means. I just want to welcome Critic94. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, this message I found like a little bit distracting, but well, who cares? And Mick has subscribed with Prime. Cool. Thank you too. I now have two subscribers. Oh, um. <laughs> yeah, just let me bring it here. This is how it looks. I can bring the whole window here. I don't know what this means or this means but yeah cool i'll figure it out off, off stream later uh but thank you cool uh, okay so we have disconnect uh, okay let's see what happens if i change something here disconnected connected i also want probably we have failed to connect message and i probably want just connect message right connected to and we need this because uh, i don't know if, if we are reconnecting it will do something uh, like uh, yeah, okay i, I just uh, it's probably better to over communicate it under communicate or something like that yeah okay um, uh, little thanks for your code thank you for your telegram blog and your content oh yeah and your code too thank you guys thank you guys um happy you happy you like it um i think we did disconnect right so what i want to test is like multiple disconnects like this and now go here and see make sure that we only get disconnected like once ah, i don't you don't see it but anyways yeah i think we we figured it out so let's mark it as done and committed right it's the uh, most exciting part and we also disconnect on plugin plugin unload something like that and motivation in readme so we did multiple things really uh, one is in readme one is in here this we don't care and this is just wrong so we need committing this as well yay first commit today cool it feels good it feels good to actually do something okay can we do this one maybe we can so for ender apple the thing with Android Apple, actually, wow, actually, it's interesting. How is it uh, different transport work? Mm, so I specify this, right? Hmm, 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 hmm. but we don't really mm. 
Yeah, you see, so you see, there's CGI transport, so it can turn any REPL into like command line REPL, and I suppose it was really easy to do. So that was I was talking about. Like, if you have machine friendly foundation, you can build human friendly, like Telnet interface on top of it relatively easily. Okay, so uh, this exists, whatever. We probably not going to replace with Eden. Maybe with JSON, like, but if we want to replace with JSON, it would, we would need JSON library. We don't bring want to bring JSON library. So we're not going to do that. Like focus, we want to focus, right? So what we want, okay, <laughs> we want to redirect this to the out. Okay, um, the way it works, let's take a look at built-in operations. So our operations are eval actually, right? So std out comes from eval. Um, so you see, so like there's lots of keys for redefining different stuff, like how an REPL works. And the good of them, uh, good for thinking about it in advance. Uh, maybe it was not in advance. Maybe it came from necessity, or I don't know. But it's 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 pretty good that they thought about it. The problem I had with this is like even though there are so many options, I was unable to like put extra information, like to actually customize my <laughs> exception output. Unfortunately. Right, I need to use middleware, but uh, anyways, yeah, it's it's really good. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, we have print, it prints value of integer row, so we return the response, it will be aligned. Uh, this we don't need, this we don't need. Uh, file blah blah blah. I think, yeah. I think what we need is print a fully qualified symbol naming a var whose function to use for printing must point on function signature value writer options, right? So this is <sighs> this is not what we need. Oh, we can use it. We can't use it. This probably is a print middleware that uh, prints actual values. It's not the out middleware. So what we are interested in is interruptible eval. And it's in CLJ. Uh, I'm surprised I only get one hit. Wait, what? I should get more hits actually. The fuck. Topological sort. <gasps> okay, so this is uh, actually important for us, and we will have to take a look on this later. Uh, let's remember that uh, for adding middleware. So because I, I think it, it didn't work because I, I haven't figured out uh, how dependencies of mid between middlewares work. Um, let's go. Interruptible eval. Uh, okay. Yeah, I heard it. I spelled it differently. Okay, but anyways, this is a place that does actual eval. And the problem that I had is that the keys that I actually really want to customize is like here. And uh, this is this is where all this class of uh, if you remember i complained about class exception blah 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 comes from because they take class and call a string on it very strange very strange thing um very strange thing yeah <laughs> actually what i think would be better here is uh, this because the word class just it just doesn't make any sense. Should we actually file 
and, and repl pull request. Let's see if there was something about it. No, I don't know. Like, okay, so doing this would be relatively easy. So maybe it should be two pull requests, really. One fixes this, right? And the other, um, and the other adds messages that, that, as I did. And data. I also not sure why they populated here, even though we we have a namespace that actually uh, works with them. Like we like throwable, we save throwable, which is uh, good. Yes, we want that. Um, what's this actually? Oh. And they call the Yuval on Closure Many Repl. And we'll, let's see if print out. Okay, I'm trying to figure out where where this capturing of um, maybe it isn't print. You know what? Let's see if we find. Okay, this is still Kane. The Kane does its own thing, I suppose. It tries to. What we interesting is this. Is it this? Okay, so maybe this uses this replying print writer. Returns print writer symbol for being in as out or air. All of the content written to the print writer will be sent as messages on the transport key by key. Okay, yeah, so this is what sends those messages. Right, and um, you see out and error here. So what we can do, I think, is we can just write a middleware. Again, I'm, I'm kind of excited with middleware. I, I, like, I, I didn't understand, don't, I still don't understand really how this, uh, this works. But the idea of them is pretty exciting and uh, like very extensible. So what we're going to std out to do is, and this is stupid, like we can't really undo, we probably don't want to undo what this is doing, but um, hmm, let's see. Yeah, so <laughs> so and it kind of works in a kind of weird way. So when message goes in, it actually goes in through layers of middlewares, kind of like they go in in a ring, for example, right? 
and that part I understand. But as so something in this chain at any point can actually generate um, a message, and that message is could be sent immediately, right? It doesn't bubbles up, right? And this part is tricky for me, and I don't know why it is that way. So the way I would probably um, design it. It might be would be different. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's a good idea. Really. Well, anyways. So uh, my point, all right. So in order for this to work, is we we have to implement transport. So basically, the way to intercept messages generated by other middlewares, we want to generate transport that wraps another transport and transport is kind of tricky it, it has both receive and send so it's not just a function so it's kind of annoying to implement um, code transport okay let's call it uh, wrap std out wrap output output transport uh this we don't touch and here like uh we don't care about throwable we care about response okay so what we do is when some out response right if we have um, Sorry, we have out, out. Ah, uh, let's use normal. It's a normal way. So if there's out in response, right? What we do is system out print out. Mm, system out, system. No, not the system, the system so there's a field called out it has type print stream and what we have is it has print string okay and i want to flash okay so print um, string i think it's like that or maybe like that i'm not sure and the uh, second thing we want this error uh, okay so if it's error So this is how our transport is going to look. What we are going, to, we're going to copy this completely. Mm. We are going to replace this with that. So this I haven't figured out. We'll, we'll look at it, but wait a second. And it will probably will look at it when implementing the next ta task. Uh, for now, we just want this to work. Okay. So wrap code. I don't know. Let's say there is key requires and expects, and I still don't understand how it works. Um, and what? Okay. So we, what we're going to do is I'll go here. And there is an add middleware. And what do output? Something like that. And there is also probably want to list our middleware so we can check what's going on. Okay. Um, on, oh, oh, oh. No, this is the wrong button. Ex exactly wrong button to click. Okay, let's try. Uh, We have our test, 
We have this. We try to connect. Yes, because it's like this. We connect. Huh. Didn't found the script. What? Wrap output. Hmm. But anyways, uh, so this is a list of middlewares that we installed. There's ours isn't here, which is stupid. And uh -huh, class not found, system out print. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I probably want to rename this to middleware. I also probably want to name it the same as uh, namespace. Then what we are going to do is to find all those, put middleware in here. You know what? This probably should be like this. So it shouldn't be shouldn't have dots because it's like it's not nested, right? Uh, middleware is nested, but this is not nested. Um, hmm. Okay. What do we have now? Ah, we we have a problem with system out. Okay, I have to figure this out. Real in uh, closure console probably. What's how do what? What do you mean? Class not found. With what? No, 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 no. It's so it's system slash. Yeah, I could never remember this, like how in closure where to put dots and where to put uh, slashes. Sometimes dots work, sometimes slashes work, sometimes there's no difference. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I can't remember it really. I, I, I think in languages there shouldn't be different types of delimiters. There should be always be dot, for example, that, and it always means go inside and like this is just confusing, right? Okay, yeah, and we renamed our package so um, we have the word middlewares written somewhere, okay? Connection refused. Okay, now we're getting what we expected. Let's start on REPL. Let's connect. Okay, so we installed something. Uh, we actually didn't because, so you see, like, mm, 
click I say add middleware right but first I send load file okay and load file kind of works it's done right then I say add middleware and I have what, what the fuck what, this is wrong okay <laughs> no wonder this doesn't work um yeah because I forgot comma here cool okay and now we have them ins installed all right so we have sublime web errors sublime web output um hopefully so the idea is that we should see std out here now as well as on the wire right and we want to keep it on the wire for compatibility but we probably will just ignore it so what we're going to do is go here boom and it says nil which is correct and here we see not much right Fuck. Huh. why is that okay let's do this no reaction still Okay, this is not good. <laughs> We're still getting this like I don't know. This looks correct to you. Let's try this. And we need to, to actually reload our, yeah. Okay, and now let's try this no reaction hmm. um the reason for that might be actually that Andrew apple somehow intercepts so let's go here and see what we are using uh, we're using under apple dot cmd line uh do you have an apple in here yes i do um closure and repl cmd line okay there should be main function here somewhere mm -hmm. dispatch command Actually, does it uh, save port file in REPL dot port? Hi, huh, interesting. Sorry, it's a file that has a protocol pass for its port number. So, uh, it was interesting. We, do, we we don't see this, right? For some reason, we don't see that file. We say port. But we don't say any command. Uh, huh. But anyways, uh, probably what we need is X server, like port, port, transport, memory boss. Print format send back or or this one of them kind of starts server. Uh, 
I'm, I'm kind of lost. I don't see where server gets started. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I'm. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, it's right here. I'm, I just missed it. Uh, so what is the uh, start server? Okay. Um, start server. And what we are looking for is if uh, it intercepts like std in or std out or something like that. It shouldn't, right? Hmm. I don't see it really. Okay, let's try. Let's try. No, what can we try? Where did it try? Is it? There's no other server. Okay, what if we say we start with and repo? So kind of we do this. kind of do this, okay? And then figure out how to start like server. Start server. Start server. So what we want to do is require repl server and we want to do that and the option takes um, this port All right so you do this and we put five 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 and what we want to do with that we want to do this in future so that we don't block. I actually expected this to print like message, but maybe not. Okay, so now let's see if we can connect. Yeah, it seems like. So I can print on here, right? No problem. Uh, can I print on here? Uh huh. So now kind of what? Oh, now I kind of print what is here. So this probably what my middleware prints when I added it the last moment. Probably don't need that or that. So this is kind of this, right? Mm, let's say we do this. So that we can like, distinguish between our output and not our. Nothing here, right? Huh. Interesting. Hmm. 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 Let's put this back. So this like will happen always. This will not. This will not. <laughs> this will not. Uh -huh. So it's like it's kind of like 
old version of code. Okay, let's finish this. Let's start it again and require this connect print. Okay, okay, so now we kind of see what we wanted. We get response, which is this. We get error, which is this. We get response again, and we get response again. So we get our error, right? So if we print, for example, sublime, we get our out. So what I am confused with is like if we reconnect and print second time, third time, it kind of works. Yes. It kind of works. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, but I want also to be able to see results here. So this is what's strange for me. Why I didn't see them here? I assume server somehow eats them up. Like what's different, right? Or we didn't get our middleware actually. Let's see once again. No, 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 it doesn't work for some reason. Oh, actually, you know what? What we can do? We can do. Uh, we, we 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 can uh, actually just do print ln system slash out hello system out print ln. Right? We can just evaluate um, with this. Okay, this works, <laughs> but our Huh. Our doesn't, uh, and you 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 can't really like redefine those, can you? Oh. Okay, let's see. Let's let's take a look at the last tag. So one problem could be we get into like wrong order or something like that. Um, so to figure if that's the case, let's just keep reconnecting and okay, so I want this to split view. No, not not like that. Can we split layout for rows? I kind of put it here so we can see what gets printed we don't care much about this now right but we can see what gets printed mm -hmm. let's uh, do this now no 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 it shouldn't be the case by the way i'm wondering if yeah yeah okay so something is a foot And what I, our options as I see them is try again. Um, connect. Print now. <sighs> it feels like our middleware isn't even evaluated, right? It's kind of here. Hmm. Somewhere.
Let's play with this a little bit. The order changed at all. Okay, now we under interruptible, all right. Yay, now it works. Okay, cool. So, hmm. so it was an ordering issue. So another thing that worries me is maybe this should be like that, right? And wait to check this. So maybe we solved this. Okay, so let's go here. We don't need this. We probably don't need Revy. Okay, let's let's keep this for now and uh, go to test. This is out. And this is air. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, yeah, we, we remove this. Uh, this is actually for client to distinguish. So I would prefer maybe if Sublime somehow distinguished between uh, like out and air, like maybe use, using colors. I don't know. We can use colors, but. Okay, but well, this seems to work. Uh, this is good news. Uh, good news. Um, this is was middleware ordering, right? Issue. So the way our issues are now in here. Like, see, I don't understand like the order which in which they go in. So I assume we go from the bottom right so we, we install our errors and output wrappers transports custom transports then it goes into eval and eval produces some stuff and we already have uh, those installed and but with wrap code we should be after it because i don't know we probably don't care actually let's see if we can move we probably don't need this and this i know it removes Okay, so it now sorts like this. Maybe we need it. Let's see if we have. Yeah, we need it. Okay, so uh, middleware here we need it because otherwise, like wrapped code removes throwable from response, and we don't want that. So we kind of executing inside. And this is outside, right? And here we probably just need this. So because we don't care about wrapped code, right? And let's see, now we get good to our messages and we get output in our shell. Cool. Oops. Uh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> um, this is gonna be an issue maybe not maybe not so the 
problem here is actually is that as I told you earlier uh, when you throw an exception it actually wait what it gets printed that's a problem right the exception prints to as to the error uh, could we avoid it let's let's check actually there is some this is not what we want but maybe so i think the code function of this one okay um so the code in here not sure what the syntax means the first right symbol blah 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 right so resolve code goes here so transport so if we have the symbol otherwise it's just new right so this might be new or code fn and code fn is repl code it's function to use to convey interactive error can error printing to error okay yeah that makes sense so this is what we and this is actually pretty bad all right so if we do this mm -hmm. yeah maybe we want to replace that actually because default code cook for apple because it prints error to message throwable to minus x as x s to error so the problem with that is we don't get uh, stack trace kind of yeah right is that right okay let's see we don't right okay so this i'm what i'm going to do uh, what i'm going to do is <sighs> print stack trace because uh, i doubt like single line is our stack trace yeah so this is stack trace stack traces are good we do want stack traces right what we don't want is actually and this would be a different this file part we fixed um print stack trace to std error well sounds like for some reason this is a, a, another cool story like um for a long time people have been complained complaining that um error like working with errors is uncomfortable or annoying con or i don't know hard enclosure and uh like <laughs> and, and guys at closure decided that the way to solve it is just to get like the like no no the complaint was like um stack traces are not hard to read okay and the reason the way they say they handle it is just they started printing just a message without this stuff what but what you actually want like the only good part like the really good part about java is uh java stack traces stack traces, stack traces are good right you want stack traces so and uh, what you actually want to do is you want to translate java stack trace into closure stack trace because sometimes well, actually kind of it's it kind of happening here right so this is like closure source so 
this is even proper source the only thing that i would probably change is like this looks kind of not okay so this is like mangled name from closure generated name you can replace this and you can collapse stuff like this and walk and work static it's actually just function call enclosure um and yeah you can do that for sure yeah and that's what you expected uh, to happen and i'm not sure but for some reason they decided that not what people want and just, just just then just instead of fixing this they just hid everything and left you on with this and you can see like here like this is what you get and this is not what you want like you want way more because uh, information you usually want sometimes it's it's in the first line yes sure this, this is the first line but sometimes it's deeper and sometimes you want to understand what's going on so what we want to do is um print stack traces properly uh, in order to do that we want to go to actually here so maybe in here somewhere is a function that can print exceptions not sure but within a string from exception data is produced by x triage the first line summarizes exception phase and location the subsequent lines describe the cause x slash str uh, but um, it kind of no i don't i don't understand okay 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 but no 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 let's 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 do this let's let's see how this works first of all where does this comes from okay but no no it's okay so this is some closure map right so let's see what keys i in here so the v trace and cause okay so let's see cause the cause is abc so i suppose cause is message v is exception message abc at um, hmm. and what are, what's the third trace oh yeah, yeah the trace and trace is actually kind of stack trace yeah and okay so, so the, the stack trace is here um the other thing that i want to note actually um like uh, this plugin doesn't work yet right uh it was like it's far from what I want, but it's super useful already. Like you see, I, I can like I can play with code and interact and explore right here without going like anywhere. And it's very nice. Just just the ability to select some string and see evaluation result inside. It's it gets you eighty percent there. Like I am already happy with it. I actually might stop for some time uh developing it because yeah that's that's most of what you want um okay so triage 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 <laughs> whatever right uh so it goes through triage and then it goes through x s tier so x to tier is probably let's say and this is probably something like this, right? No. Okay, so it needs uh, triage first. <laughs> okay. um so i suppose triage is what gets you <laughs> it removes all the stuff from from exceptions so you probably don't want to do triage okay there must be um hmm. yeah so 
I think in Clojure there are actually multiple namespaces uh, dedicated to to stack traces. And let's go and see what we have. So we have main. Main is like REPL stuff, right? We also have stack trace, which is I don't know what it does, but like print stack trace element, print throwable. Uh -huh. So maybe print throwable is what we want. Print stack trace. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's uh, just uh, closure stack trace. Mm, closure stack trace print throwable and we have this throwable right um, boom and it doesn't print stack trace okay so print stack trace wait what oh it's because it has extra okay by the way, what happened here? Like, if I, okay, yeah, it's a syntax error, something, something, um, not very helpful. Like, the actual information is, I know where the actual information is. Wait, what? It's printed here, right? Huh. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Why is it printed? Okay, so this looks more useful. Um, let me print this just to like separate this. So this is here uh, for sublime. Okay, now we call this. Yeah, so what we want is probably this. Okay, um, this is not closure oriented by any means, but it doesn't rob you of stack trace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we go, actually, you know what, stack trace. you know what, let's do, let's do commit first, right? Because we did some things, so we did that and we fixed that. So we can commit actually this fixed ordering with how was it called? Wrap errors. Yeah, wrap. Okay, uh, this her names. This is yeah. Let it be. This is we need this. We need this. So we change so much so it doesn't detect renaming. Okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> do we want this? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, let's, let, let it be. Uh, the more uh, the more uh, test cases, the better, I think. Right? We don't probably need that. So we save this. We say commit. We say push. And now back to our. This should be actually pretty easy. What we're going to do is we go to package and uh, there is a while. So we just put some extra in here. And what we want to put is, well, we want, we want this. And what we want is kind of this, right? yeah instead of this and this is not what we want uh quota let it be for now we don't need this and i also don't think we need to list middlewares since we figured out that they work <sighs> okay okay let's save let's see 
boom and we get information here and we get stack tracing here and we even get data which is very cool right so oh, cool let's do this and we get another stack trace uh, is it convenient i don't know maybe eventually this is going to be an option right what i'm worried about is that this works strangely right so compiler exception syntax error compiling blah 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 so it might be the problem might be okay let's see no can i clear this no huh terminus Okay, so this will be closure. This will be called terminal. Okay, and what do we have? I I want to um, clean. Minimize, regenerate, remove user C, remove user function, bindings. There's no clear, he said. Hmm. Whatever. Okay, we can do this. And now, what, what was I confused with? Yeah, this one. Okay, so let's call this and see what's going on. So we have syntax error compiling at 1 1. There is phase compile syntax check, no source pass. All right okay this is very interesting because like the actual problem is that this symbol doesn't exist why are we seeing this instead is it because it's like root cause okay so if we change for example if we stop using this and use the default right what happens then Yeah, so you see the difference is this is the same. So message, I suppose, is the same. I'm seeing like closure data. Is it is it data? Huh. So I want to see this somehow. I just don't understand why I can't. Okay. Just run time exception. Maybe there are two of them. Oh. Okay, uh, let's go with. What part of this library am I writing in Python? Uh, this is Sublime Text plugin for REPL. And uh, Sublime Text plugins are written in Python. For good or for bad, I don't know. But they are in Python. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, let's maybe go to normal REPL just because like to exclude everything else okay so our exception is like this right the cause is closure stack trace compile exception data nice Wait. Now we don't see this message. 
Wait, what? We see what? Ah, okay, 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 okay. Sorry. So because I didn't require the namespace, it's completely different there that, uh, from the one that we want. Okay, so we we, we see that. Okay, uh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, let's print exception. Okay, and so it's kind of ah. Uh, So it's kind of compiler compiler exception. Is there exception data? Yes. Okay, what the fuck? <laughs> Is it some special condition? There should be a class called compiler exception somewhere. Right. It has to be defined somewhere, <laughs> like it could be not defined. Oh, okay, so it is. So it has source line data and uh, okay um actually throwable and get calls is what bingo so uh, this is exception wrapped in, into an, in another exception, and this is why we are not seeing what we're supposed to see. Um, hmm. It's interesting because our actually our wrapper is supposed to catch that, and uh, like if we can get message. Right? Yeah, yeah. So now we get the correctness. So as I said, we always are interested in root cause. Um, now the question really is like, what the fuck? Like, why don't we see the root cause? Because, because, because what? Like our middleware, uh, which handles error called error. We are actually fucking hell there is some special condition if <laughs> what the fuck okay we just um, write the same loop here This is our way. I am probably missing something, but okay. Okay, we did something very bad. 
really entered infinite loop somehow. Yeah, this is better. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Reload. Nothing works for some reason. Something doesn't work. So what doesn't work? So Nerpal just doesn't uh, respond to us now. Why, why our while doesn't work? Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so this is uh, because it also has to something like this. We can actually write a function. Because this is uh, like pretty isolated functionality, right? So it's better to rewrite it. <sighs> like this. Um, it goes. Okay. We save this. Uh, and and again, we somehow entered infinite loop as it appears. Okay, while we start, I read the message. Uh, no, I will not read this message. This is some sort of spam. And We have one timeout mod. Yes, band. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Done. Um, somehow we get into infinite loop again. I don't understand how that could be. But but oops. 
Okay, evaluation works again. Um, exceptions kind of work. Yay! Um, so by removing this weird condition inside root cause, like everything about exception handling in closure, I don't understand. It's for some reason, it's super complicated. It's super, it, it does the wrong thing all the time. And for like, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but yeah, it seems to work. Cool. And we probably should return this, right? So uh, not, not really, maybe uh, what I actually want to do with this is I want to pair that instant trace with get root oh that's what i want yeah and it's called print cause trace we can use that for now but uh, what i really want to do okay so if i do something like this uh, you see what happens um, it prints the whole chain and it might be okay, might be, might be too much. Um, usually you don't really care about what happened. Like why would closure stop here if there is no source path? What the fuck, really? Okay, and what we have here, like again, for some reason I cannot clean, but let me just do this. Okay, let's see what happens, right? Oh, it's okay, yeah. Uh, I'll probably do... print calls trace. And the way it is going to be to work is it's going to be stack trace, print cost trace, and we are going to use our own root cause t, right? And we need. Yeah, okay, so this is what we need, and uh, to do that, sublime closure apple middle wire sublime closure apple middle wire. Okay, this is what we need, right? Let's go here, let's make some space. Boom. Yeah, perfect. No such war. And you get an exception. <sighs> I think this has also some stack element with bindings, ripple, trace, report it, and output an exception report for some of the target. Okay, let's try this one uh, just for fun, right? Um, what we're going to do is closure main slash reporter, or just to see how it works. Oh yeah, yeah, and and this is like this is another my another favorite actually. So like remember it when you uh, said um, that they just decided to hit this stack trace instead of like. I don't know, process it and like make it closure friendly. So for example, like we probably don't care about this part, so, like what happens inside compiler, it probably can be collapsed. This uh, apply, play tools, so and this can be, with binding star can be converted to normal with closure notation. So instead they like print only message and then they save it in a file and say like, um, 
just open this file and we want let's take a look at it actually yeah and uh, the file is an eden notation so it's not like easier to read it's like way harder to read and like what what the fuck is going on here right so this is in one line this is in four lines like what's going on so nah. for some reason for some reason error handling is is very strange it's very strange at least with like the stack trace at least it's regular right um actually let me open this again so that might be something useful in here actually no no do you see it doesn't even like demongols names for example which you would hope to right unfortunate unfortunate but uh, anyways let's wrap up uh, we did that and i'm pretty proud with it ish okay so are we going to get stack trace yeah we're getting stack trace cool okay and we probably don't need that um This is a good example, and I'm glad we discovered it. Pretty clear, right? And this is our SD out. Can we do anything while it executes? We kind of can, right? and we can even print yeah but this is because we don't handle sessions yet uh we about to start we get, well, like we can but we cannot like interrupt it but we're about to start so probably make 100 here okay let's uh, commit this and wrap up for today You know, like half of the work we are doing is just like undoing the work that Closure Core for some reason is doing in a weird way, right? But what can you do? Why is there like also ah no no don't okay uh, I'm too grumpy and complain a lot, but all all is good. Our apple will be the best apple because because we pay attention to details. Maybe we should write something like I don't know what we should like, right? Uh, no, so not, let's not do it for now. But anyways, uh, yeah, commit is done. Uh, repository, as I remind you, is this address at my under my GitHub account. It's probably I yeah, have some stuff in here um, yeah I'm I'm pretty happy with the progress we did today it's as I've said it's already useful as you can see as you, as you have seen we've already tried to like explore something uh, what's going on using uh, just evaluation command and 
like this std out printing so it was pretty cool in my opinion um yeah and i'm happy with it and anyways thanks for watching i suppose uh, maybe we will continue tomorrow maybe not i don't know yet would not promise anything uh, i will certainly continue developing this uh, but will it be on stream or not i don't know but anyways thank you for watching and uh, have a good night or for if you're from america to have a good day i guess okay bye bye bye